Have you ever experienced brain fog? Your brain is slow, your thoughts are moving through oil, you are not having the energy, you're always feeling lazy. It's almost a pain to wake up in the morning, get a shower, go outside, get some sunlight, and actually do the work which you are destined to do. It feels like you go into a room and you've already forgotten why you went there. You open up a computer program, you forgot why you did it. This is not normal. It happens to me like clockwork every single winter. And I used to think it's some kind of seasonal affect disorder. It's not. For a lot of people, depression, seasonal affect disorder, all the stuff is just over diagnosis. So what's actually going on is a metabolic syndrome rather than a mental illness. It's nothing more and nothing less than a lack of energy in the cells that make up your brain. It's not some kind of mental illness and you shouldn't feel overly guilty for being lazy is that you literally have less energy because your mitochondria are poisoned. And how does your mitochondria get poisoned? It's because of these filthy seed oils that these big corporations with the support of the government have pushed upon your parents' generation and your own generation, poisoning your bloodstream right now. So what's going on exactly? Let's break it down, right? It's mitochondrial health. When your mitochondria are broken, and of course, you know what mitochondria is. Everybody who's taken any kind of biology will tell you. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And of course, it is the energy center of the cells which produces the energy which literally fuels your entire body, including the mind, including the brain. So I'm going to give you the red, white and blue protocol. Which is going to be a metabolic reset, going to give you infinite energy to bring your ambitions to life. The red, white and blue protocol is red light therapy, white in the form of creatine, and blue as in methylene blue. So you might be thinking, what the hell does these three things have in common? You might have heard of red light therapy. It's something which you see on TikTok and stuff. It's something you put on your face to make your skin better. And you know what's creatine, obviously. Creatine monohydrate is the stuff which you take to go to the gym, helps you get some last few reps in, get a little bit more energy. And of course, creatine is like a bodybuilding supplement, right? And then methylene blue, this is a more uncommon one. You may not have heard of it, but if you're a follower of my channel, you already know what this stuff is. It is a cognition and mental energy type supplement. So you might be thinking like, what's bringing all these things together? And I'll give you some hints. The first is, all of them are actually good for skin, including creatine. So topically applied creatine actually causes skin to reverse age. And same is true of methylene blue. That also causes a reverse skin aging. And red light therapy is kind of, that's what the purpose is. So of course it's good for skin. And then, Creatine is not just for energy, it's not just for the gym. Creatine is actually a mental supplement as well. It is a anti-neurodegenerative supplement. So people take this to prevent neurodegeneration. Literally creatine is first and foremost a mental supplement even before musculature. And lastly we come to methylene blue which is a well-known antiparasitic, antiviral, but of course it is first and foremost a mitochondrial supplement. So actually all three of these are working on the mitochondria. They are not drugs, they do not work on any kind of receptors they work directly on the mitochondrial function. They have very different pathways and their mechanism of action is very, very different from each other, which means that they have this synergistic effect. They don't interfere with each other's pathways. They, in fact, reinforce and reinvigorate the mitochondria in completely different ways. That's why I've created this red, white, and blue principle, which brings together different mechanisms of helping the mitochondria so that you finally have the energy, vitality, focus, both physical, like you have raw vitality, but also mental focus and clarity to make whatever vision you have, your destiny, to become manifest. Let's talk about these one by one. I will break down the actual mechanisms of action. I'm not going to say that the so-and-so is good because I think it's good. I'm going to give you the exact science behind it and you can make whatever determination you want because this is of course not medical advice. This is my personal experience and my own research. First, let's talk about red light therapy. This one is something which a lot of people are very skeptical about and that's fair enough. Skepticism is a good thing. But if you look at the mechanism of action of red light therapy, it actually makes a lot of sense. So what's going on is mitochondria has these five complexes. If you've seen my methylene blue video, you know what the five complexes are. I knew perhaps from a previous bio class know that complex five is a really remarkable piece of protein. It's a remarkable piece of technology, to be honest. It's a turbine, a literal turbine. So you know how a dam works, right? A dam works by having a large body of water kind of applying pressure on this fan and it spins the fan and that's connected to a generator and you produce electricity. 
that's what happens in your cell in complex number five. And I'm speaking about mitochondrial cells. Complex number five literally has a turbine which spins against the pressure of protons against it. And as it spins, it has a little claw which kind of cranks out these ATP molecules, which are energy molecules, literal packages of energy created by this damn turbine. Brilliant. I, I couldn't imagine like the beauty of this little this invention, this uh, miracle, like it's, it's, a, it's microscopic. It's not even microscopic. It's literally a molecule. It's truly mind-blowing, truly brilliant. And it shows you the beauty of nature. The beauty of nature goes from the smallest molecule to this massive tree behind me. But let's not get too philosophical. Let's go back into the science, right? So the, this machine, this turbine, functions better with red light irradiation because it causes the water around it to be less viscous and that means the turbine can spin faster and that claw can attach more ATP molecules giving you more energy. But even that's not the only mechanism of action for red light therapy in the mitochondria. Complex number four, which is cytochrome C, that's a completely different kind of molecule, it has a different function altogether. And cytochrome C, what it does, it has this claw and this claw can bind to nitrogen, well nitric oxide specifically, or it can bind to oxygen. So what the red light does is it knocks out the nitrogen from the claw and it instead has to bind to oxygen. When it binds to oxygen, you have more energy from this thing called the Krebs cycle, which is what is producing ATP in the first place. So there you have it. That's two mechanisms where red light directly influences the mitochondria to produce more ATP. And of course, more ATP means more energy overall. And you got to remember, there's more mitochondria in the nerve cells than the muscle cells. You think of mitochondria, we think of energy, we think of muscles. But actually, 20% of the calories which you eat, it's being used for the brain. It's used for mental capacity, it's used for thinking, it's for thoughts, it's for the subconscious to function. Not for the muscles, 20% for one single organ, which is roughly the shape of, or the size of a, a football. Well, the rest, 80%, is for the rest of your body. So a lot of energy goes to your brain, and the efficiency of the energy utilization depends on the health of the mitochondria, which is why we bring up the red, white, and blue principle. So we talk about red, which is the red light therapy. And I will say that red light therapy, you cannot just get any kind of lamp, any kind of product, because a lot of the products are shit. I will link in the description to the one which I have used. I think it's a really good brand. And the reason I think this is because they've taken a lot of care in the engineering of this product. And of course, as a past engineer, I really appreciate this. They know that non-native EMFs, so non-native electromagnetic frequencies, are damaging for the human body. And knowing this, they custom designed their fans to have less magnetic radiation. They also custom designed a Faraday cage around their the housing of the actual lights so that the EMF exposure is very limited. It's basically zero. And when a company takes so much care of the fans and the housing, I'm going to assume that their lights are of high quality as well. And you might be asking, well, red light therapy is quite expensive. And it is. It's from $400 all the way to like thousands of dollars. And I don't want to prescribe something which is outside the buying power of most of my viewers. It doesn't make sense for me to do that. So I'll tell you right now that you don't need red light therapy devices in order to get red light therapy. You know what's a really good source of red light? It's the sun. So you can get this in the morning, you can get this in the night. So red light, so you usually associate blue light to be in the morning, right? Blue light wakes you up, gives you the circadian rhythm reset, that's fine. But the truth is there's also red light coming from the sun in the morning as well as in the evening times. So the moral of the story is get sunlight as much as you can every single day. I would go so far as to say that one hour minimum. And here's the thing, there's something which has happened in the modern world which prevents us from getting the sunlight we are supposed to have. In the winter months especially, we're spending practically 24 hours within our indoors enclosure, inside our homes, either in the office or college. And this is not how our ancestors lived. Our ancestors, even during winter months, would have to go out either to collect firewood, to fish, to hunt, to milk their cattle, whatever it was, you would get some sunlight even during the harshest winter months. Except when there's an actual blizzard going on, yes, you would get some sunlight. And that's simply not something that we do. Our modern habits, we go to our office or college and by the time we return back home, the sun's already gone down and there's no more opportunity to get sunlight. So I would suggest if you cannot afford a red light therapy device, just wake up in the morning, get sunlight as soon as you can, or even during the day, doesn't matter when, just get some sunlight. But of course, if you can afford it, 
then a red light therapy is a great long-term investment. Now we move on to creatine. And of course, I know that you know what creatine is. Creatine is the stuff you take to get your muscles more jacked, give you more reps in the gym. It's an energy supplement. It's for bodybuilders, correct? Yes and no. It is, of course, great for muscle building, and it is a safe and healthy supplement to have. But there's actually even more research suggesting it's amazing for the brain health. In fact, creatine is used as an anti-neurodegeneration prescription. It is not a drug. It doesn't bind to receptors. It is a mitochondrial supplement yet again. But the way the creatine works is completely different from red light therapy. So red light therapy works on the complexes in the mitochondrial inner cell wall. Creatine doesn't do that. Creatine converts to phosphocreatine and the phosphocreatine so, okay, I should rewind a little bit. So, we talked about how ATP is the energy unit of the cell. Fine. But when ATP is used up, it becomes something called ADP. So, ATP is adenosine triphosphate, so tri as in three. ADP is adenosine diphosphate, which is di as in two. So, when it loses a phosphate group, it becomes a less energetic state. So, phosphocreatine can add an extra phosphorus, well, actually a phosphate, and then you have a high energy ATP again. So it's a conversion mechanism from ADP to ATP. Of course, the actual biochemistry is a little bit more complex than this, but it suffices to say that creatine is a mitochondrial support supplement, and that's why it has these amazing properties of regeneration for the brain. As useful for nerve cells as it is for muscle cells. And I'll go so far as to say it's actually more helpful for nerve cells than muscle cells because nerve cells actually have a higher concentration of mitochondria than the actual muscles do. So this combination of red light therapy plus creatine is already very powerful. It's already protective of the neurons in your brain. It's already firing up mitochondria in a way that it wasn't doing before. And then you add in the third component of the red, white, and blue protocol, which is methylene blue. I did a whole video about this, but let's go into the, just the basics. Methylene blue is an auto-reducing agent, which means that it can donate an electron or accept an electron. Why it's important is, as the mitochondria is cranking out more energy, it's also producing ROS, reactive oxygen species, which are a waste byproduct, which are kind of toxic to the cells. So this methylene blue can actually neutralize them by accepting an electron from them and basically making them neutral and non-harmful. It can also donate an electron to the components within the electron's transport chain in order to have that functioning of glucose to actual energy. So this combination, now think about what's going on here. You have a synergistic effect. You have three different mechanisms of action, all of which are not only protecting the mitochondria from damage, they're also boosting up the mitochondrial function, they're also clearing out the waste products of the mitochondria. This unique protocol, I haven't really seen this discussed elsewhere, is a short-term solution, to be fair. In the long term, you want to actually fix up your mitochondrial health through a better diet, better nutrition, better lifestyle in general. But oftentimes, in order to make long-term changes, you need a short-term win to make that happen. Because what is long-term success? Long-term success is a series of short-term successes which build one upon the other. I believe that the red, white, and blue protocol can be one small success in that chain of greater successes until you reach your final destiny. So let's talk about dosages and specific actionable steps. So when it comes to red light therapy, I have done 20 minutes a day in 10 minute sessions. So morning, wake up, get 10 minutes of red light therapy in. At night, 10 minutes of red light therapy. And there's a theory that it could boost testosterone function. And the idea is red light therapy improves mitochondrial functions. And of course, the Leydig cells, which produce testosterone in the balls, they contain mitochondria, obviously. And by boosting mitochondrial function in the Leydig cells, you actually can produce more testosterone. There's very limited data on this, so I cannot say that this is something which is true. But if you try it and you feel better, then there's a likelihood that it's having some kind of effect. Whether it's testosterone or not, you are going to feel better through red light therapy. Regarding creatine, 5 grams of creatine monohydrate per day. That's the standard dosage. I have no recommendations about that. And then when it comes to methylene blue, it depends on how much you react. Some people will have a massive reaction to just one or two drops of methylene blue. And some people like myself, I need a whole dropper of methylene blue in order to see the effects. And there's also the worry about the side effects of methylene blue. Some people have a higher level of anxiety due to methylene blue. I think it's because methylene blue is so effective at removing brain fog that when you remove the brain fog, you're face to face with your anxious thoughts. So if that's the case for you, I would suggest, of course, fixing mental health issues before getting on methylene blue. Now, 
mental health is a little bit different. So what I talked about today is actually metabolic health. I'm talking about mitochondria. And I'll, of course, make a separate mental health guide when the time is right. And I have, of course, suggested what brand of red light therapy that I've used. You may choose to use that brand, or if you have some better suggestion, put it in the comments. But when it comes to creatine, go for any brand, doesn't really matter. I personally just go for the Optimum Nutrition brand. Just make sure that the ingredients list has nothing but creatine monohydrate. If it has any kind of fillers, any kind of stabilizers, that's not the correct brand to go for. And then lastly, the Methylene Blue. There's only one brand that I've used and the only brand that I trust because you really want to get the pharmaceutical grade Methylene Blue. If you get the industrial grade, like from some random brand on Amazon, that's going to do you far more harm than good. So the brand which I use, I'll link it in the description. And there you have it, boys. That is the red, white, and blue protocol. If you want the show notes for this video, there is an email intake form in the description which will send you the show notes, the actual actionable steps and everything in bullet form to your email. And finally, if you like me, I'm talking about outside my content. If you like me personally, then you should follow me on Instagram for like actual personal day-to-day -day wisdom or knowledge or stuff like that, which I learn on a day-to-day -day basis. I'll put it on Instagram before it comes to YouTube. Thank you for watching and remember always that fortune favors the bold.